What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Site Visit here in our Salty Project. Uh, we've been talking about this plaster for a while. You guys gave us a lot of flack for what you guys saw for uh, the substrate under here. But now you can see what that was actually doing is essentially just prepping our framing for our wire mesh, which ended up getting installed here. And then we plastered this uh, continuously. Um, a lot of things went into consideration here. The Colby and his team had to make sure that you know we were running parallel to our outside stringer and then we are mimicking a lot of the details on the original staircase from the first to the second floor into this one with this curve but also wanted to bring this curve down and tie into the first floor ceiling in this really swooping motion uh, it gives it that more old world feel rather than being a more traditional square style uh, staircase you can see our outside skirt here we have this reveal all the way around basically created with a stop bead dissimilar material plaster touching a dissimilar material wood giving that really intentional line all the way around a lot of this is mimicking the existing staircase below um, we're actually working with the team at uh, hdi staircase and they're going to be uh, making this handrail we sent them this profile and this profile will be essentially extruded uh, for lack of better terms, and then turned into a wreath going up the staircase. And we have a second wreath up top. So we're having this handrail, which, you know, a couple things to note is this handrail is actually lower than code. We're not touching this, but we are transitioning from a non-code compliant height up to a code compliant height on this staircase. But the nice thing is that it will be one continuous handrail, again, further making this staircase look like it's always been there leading up to the third floor. You guys remember back there, there was a third floor staircase that brought you up to the third floor. It was like the back of house staircase. Uh, now this is part of the main staircase. Uh, and as we work our way up, you can see that that skylight is bringing in the natural light that we were hoping for in this area. Really important with this design. We've talked about the flatness of this wall. Everything has been really trued up. And then you can see how that light kind of comes diagonal across and hits this wall and really fills up the, the, the light well, which is really important. Good. Liz doesn't like the camera, so. She's got, what, two more weeks and then you're on? <clears throat> um, you guys know plenty about this, the, the skylight. Same thing in here. It's also another blue, blue sky day. If you guys remember, there was a, a, a revealed episode that we did on this vanity. Uh, vanity is now being installed. Now that we're beyond plaster, we got our tile installed, um, our tile floor, which we'll get there in a second. Uh, but the vanity is installed and we get the guys from Metropolitan here doing our stone template. What he's actually working on right now is actually the windowsill. We talked about that as well. You can see on this one, Colby and his team actually have a stop bead here. What that stop bead is set at, it's exactly 3 cm down from this seam. So when these guys from Metro installed the stone, stone will sit down on here. We have a nice dissimilar, I mean a nice separation between plaster and stone. We're not trying to caulk that necessarily. It, it, it creates that intentional straight line. Uh, and then top of stone will hit right here. Uh, a really intentional, really important detail that will really make this whole area come together uh, and look well thought out. What Cooper's working on is he's prepping these door, these door openings for our jams. This is actually gonna be the latch side of the door and making sure that when he installs that door, he's got a nice straight plumb uh, area to work off of. Uh, I'm looking at this, wondering if we should get, we don't have a jam master, do we? What? Do we have a jam master? He doesn't know what that is. But <laughs> Spencer from Insider Inside Carpentry, Carpentry, thank you, Doug, has a jam master. And, and essentially, he goes back and, and sets these blocks in the wall. And then you put that jam master on, you rudder out so they're perfectly plumb. Because what you're wow. doing right now is you're creating points that are, are plumb by, by shape. Is that, is that right? On this side, I'm not. Uh, I'm going to do it on the. Uh... Always wrong. What's that? Nothing. I said I'm always wrong. Good. <laughs> I'm gonna plumb this side, uh, the hinge side, and then this side. I'm just kind of squeezing the gap a little bit so I can slide some shims in there, and it's not so much space. I got you. Yeah. So that side, you'll, but you're essentially gonna take blocking and set them plumb. Plumb. But you'll do that by measuring each block that you need, right? Yeah, so the Jam Master, what Spencer uses, basically you put the blocks on there, you, you shim, I think he uses the hyper glue, and then he takes his router and then it basically sets and you just router out the extra material and it creates it plumb. That's awesome. So maybe you should talk to your boss about getting a Jam Master. We should, we should definitely do that. So 
couple of things. So he's working on the jams. Um, in doing so, we actually found, I think it's actually the one he's working on, is that that wall actually fattened up a little bit with our plaster. So we're gonna have to modify one of the jams um, just because that wall we wanted to, again, perfectly flat ended up causing, uh, we had a little build out more than uh, the, the traditional four and five eighths. So we're actually gonna rebuild one of the jams to do that. Uh, James is working on a built-in cabinet for next to the fireplace. So we've had this alcove set, we've talked about in a previous episode about how that wall had to be perfectly flat for this uh, cabinet. And that's because this cabinet's actually gonna sit flush, right James? So it sits flush with the face of the fireplace. That's still blue board, I'll talk about that in a second, but it sits flush with the face of the fireplace and it has a, a reveal. So you're actually using um, these metal reveals. Thank you. So this is a Pitcom product, shadow gap detail. It's a piece of aluminum. We've pre-painted this the color that it matches very close to what the finish of this wall will be. Uh, and then this will get essentially, let me flip that around. That'll get, you know what, why don't we, can I, I'm not gonna spin it on them. But essentially you're gonna have, if this was the other way around, you'll have this shadow gap between face frame. He did it anyway, he brought it around for me. He's, you know what it's gonna happen? He's gonna tell Ken that I, slow, I slowed him down. So that's, that's our detail here. So we have our walnut face frame that will be attached to our box. Uh, they get a series of lamello uh, clamp, uh, clips in the back. And then we have, are we holding a quarter inch? Quarter inch, quarter by half, yeah. So it's a half inch deep, quarter inch wide. Again, that's pre-painted. You do not want to paint this flange because if you paint that flange, it, it, you cannot plaster to it. You got to leave that raw aluminum. So they've done a nice job taping that off and then painting that. And we, we can always touch it up, but this this prevents a lot of the the handwork necessary. Uh, and we'll have, and then from here will be that surface on the fireplace. And what that surface on the fireplace will be is actually a lime strong lime plaster. Um, it'll be a, um, all of this plaster actually gets painted, that plaster will stay raw and it will have a, a, a cloudy hand troweled look to it. Um, and essentially if you can consider, it's very similar to our back bay project, but almost like a concrete cube that if you were to extrude it up from the floor um, and then kind of di it kind of dies into the ceiling being a, a, a dissimilar material than everything else. Up top there, uh, I believe actually Kobe's on his way. He's gonna work with James on setting these reveals, but also talking about that's our heat release for our fireplace. So any of the heat that comes from the fireplace actually gets dispersed up top uh, and then across the room and then we'll fall from there. Uh, tight sight, a um, lot going on, a lot of progress, a lot of good progress. So back at our back bay project, we wrapped up the ePay screen wall we were working on last time we were here. Some of the pavers need to be modified and cut to fit. But one detail I want to mention is that when you step out the door from inside to outside, there's actually this depression in the pavers. We're actually gonna work with our paver contractor. We're gonna actually miter those pavers and do a drop curb. So rather than having a wood uh, vertical or an odd vertical, we're actually gonna epoxy that uh, two pavers together with a mitered edge so it's all one material as you step out. We also, I think I've mentioned this before, we also added snow melt into that depression because we don't want snow to be sitting in that area when we go to step out or even just sitting there when no one is opening that door because then snow just built up against that door, thus causing potential ice and water intrusion into uh, the unit. But we're back inside. We're very, very close to wrapping up plaster. Uh, we were talking about this laundry room before, and this is a great uh, stage to see what we're doing here. This is all base coated. Well, a couple details we got going on here is that we have this slight curb, so it ramps up slightly from our, you know, we'll call this elevation zero, which is our oak flooring, goes up and then kind of rolls back down and gives us about a half inch. Maybe, th maybe a little less than that um, from top of curb to this pan. And then from here, this pan is actually pitched to, you can see here, this is a floor drain. Uh, and so this is the laundry room and that floor drain is essentially if that washing machine ever leaks or we have any sort of leak in here, we're also gonna have a water bug sensor. That water bug sensor will shut off the water if it detects a leak. But should this see water, everything is pitched to towards that drain. Now what we got going on here is essentially the underlayment is a weedy underlayment, uh, completely waterproofed. Uh, and what the guys have done over uh, Van Gerben is that they've actually turned the weedy up the wall and created that half inch shadow gap uh, between that and the painted plaster. Uh, and that's all done on a weedy with our fry reglet detail. And that essentially um, mimics the painted flush base that we have throughout the rest of the space, um, which is a killer detail, but 
you know, beyond aesthetics, it's actually working as our, again, you know, similar to our South Boston project, it's creating this bathtub. So if water hits these walls, it essentially has three walls to, pre to prevent water from, you know, finding a cavity to drop down into the living space below. And then our, our you know, our, um, Weakest point is going to be this curve, but we decided to build that up. So if water does make it uphill, you know, in this pan all the way to here, there is still this um, uh, preventive preventative measure to prevent water from coming out, uh, but also not being too large where you have to step over it and possibly trip over it. Uh, so this right here has, I think, a, uh, just a either one or two more coats to the final finish. And over in the primary bathroom, we have one coat left on the walls. Uh, prior to, uh, and the floor actually has a handful of more coats, but we are in here. This is very close to what the finished look will look, look like. So it's a very smooth plaster. Like I said, there's one more coat in here um, and then it will get burnished and we'll have a slight, um, you know, it, it's, it's not a rough texture like we were just looking at in that, uh, in that laundry room. It's a very smooth texture. So it's almost a, grayed out, you know, troweled plaster look. Um, and this Devline product we've talked about a handful of times. Uh, and then in the shower here, kind of, you, you can see that this is ran all the way through. So all of this is actually waterproof plaster ceiling as well. Um, so this is a complete waterproof plaster room uh, with the exception of the stone back here. Um, we're doing this to particular product in a couple areas. Downstairs in the guest bathroom, uh, they're prepped with the base coat uh, and that's where we made that custom tub but we also have the fireplace in the living room so in the guest bathroom that fans are pretty loud um, they're basically wrapping up the waterproofing details around this uh, overflow as well as the drain in the floor um, and then this will get base coated and then ready for uh, working towards our final coat uh, we also they also got this cabinet installed with our half inch reveal and then that's brought over to our mud flange so we have that smooth um, transition between plaster and then this custom cabinetry uh, and then the fireplace and this is just base coat we've already talked about how everything is you know between painted plaster ceiling walls and then the finished floor they've kept everything off and having this intentional shadow gap really you know creates that separation of this floating monolithic cube but right now you can get the sense of it being this this monolithic stone uh, and the texture is really similar to a limestone which I do really love, uh, part of me wants to go back and, and offer to leave it as is, but you know, the intent is to, for it to be a more gray, concrete, smooth finished look. So that's where we're gonna, we're, we're gonna go with it. Um, and then we talked about it before, but up top where you see that blue tape is a heat release. So that's where, again, we're hiding the heat release to the fireplace. So everything dumps up up top. And then Steve actually just grabbed me and said that, you know, these access panels, uh, there's one on each side, and this is so we can access the, the gas shutoff as well as the wiring for the fire fireplace. And he's went ahead and actually labeled this one right. Uh, so when we put this in, it there's actually, what he was saying is that this texture here is, is kind of, you know, continuous throughout. And then once it gets its final coat, it's going to have this cloudy texture. And if these get swapped, they're not going to look right. So made sure he labeled these. We'll probably put a nice big sticker on it. So when, when, if and when these get removed, they know exactly where they go back in. Um, and then one final detail, you can see it uncovered now, is that this right here is an intentional. So this beam here got plastered and then the ceiling came to it and they actually just stop beat against that. And you can follow this line right here and then it goes behind and it goes right into that wall and it catches that, ha that, that channel going down um, that wall. So, all of this, I mean, you can really start to see how that finish is going to look. See it turned up and then into the oak. But I, I was joking with Steve is that my painter is probably going to come in here and then run a bead of caulking in here to fill that gap, which we're going to need to make sure we prevent him from doing that because this really, it's a really important detail. This is its own thing. And this isn't designed to look like it's blending into the ceiling. It's a a beam that carries a staircase. The staircase should be celebrated on its own, very similar to how we have that skirt in the wall that has a half inch bead all the way around it. You can see with the red tape there, or Doug, if you look to the finish on above, you can see it above there as well. But we're celebrating that this staircase is kind of its own, you know, sculptural piece. And these are the details that make all of that come together. But just, I mean, 
it, it seems simple now, but there's so much thought that went into uh, this here, but also making sure that this cap came in and then hit this line and stayed aligned with everything else, making sure it hit the bottom side of the tread, making sure it hit the shadow gap over there and went down all the way to the, the bottom here. Uh, this is actually the last section that we're uh, doing painted plaster on. And again, these squares are left out for our handrail brackets. Uh, and that's so that they can straight edge this wall really flat and then come in, cut this out, put the handrail brackets in, and then, then patch in just small sections rather than trying to plaster this wall around those handrail brackets.